Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today Sim Update 7 has dropped and with it a ton of new features and aircraft and activities as well as the initial implementation of DirectX 12 which is what we're going to be focusing on this video so stick around if you want to find out how it works and what to expect. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides, as well as any future updates and future guides that will be coming down the road. Link to Patreon can be found in the description below. All right, guys, so jumping right into it, as I said, today we're going to be talking about DirectX 12, at least for this video. We're going to have quite a few videos coming out today as there's been so many changes to the simulator. Some good, some really bad, some annoying, some hopefully are bugs and not intentional. Um, but we're going to be checking things out right away. So the first thing that I want to check out, obviously, is the implementation of DirectX 12. So to do that, what I'm going to do... Um, by the way, this is one of the heads up right here is, at least for me, if you guys are experiencing the same thing, let me know. I'm unable to pan through the map anymore. On the world map, you have to type in your location, and that is the only way to get to where you want to be. Really dumb implementation. I hope that wasn't intentional. Um, but uh, anyways, so let's go ahead, and first we're going to load into the simulator. We're gonna. This is the same test that I did earlier in the week uh, when I was doing my fresh install and doing an FPS update you know, checking settings and whatnot. Now, I also want you guys to be aware of a couple things when it comes to DirectX 12. With DirectX 12, as I said, this is an initial implementation. Uh, there is no guarantee that DirectX 12 is going to work for myself or you or anybody else. You may experience good behavior, you may experience some bad behavior. Um, the other thing is all of my mods, every mod and add-on, et cetera, that I have is currently removed. Uh, ATC, take a hike. Um, it does look like they fixed the parking brake issue, which was labeled in the release note, so I'm really happy about that. Anyone who has flown the TBM 930 or the Cessna 208, anytime you had the parking brake on, you'd get the master caution. So it's nice to see that it looks like that has been resolved. So let's go into developer mode, and what we're doing here is this is going to be without DirectX 12. This is the game in its default form, just sort of giving ourselves a, um, um, a baseline to start with here. And again, we're at uh, JFK. In New York so nice dense area oops <laughs> that is not what I meant to hit <laughs> let's turn that off and let's display the FPS Oh, initial separators on all right so you can see here 35.8 this is about what I was getting earlier um, in the week now the other thing I want to do is I want to set it to clear skies because that's what I was testing with um, so again not much change there and looking around oh that was different Ooh, nasty stutters there, mate. All right, that's probably just the cache loading in. No worries there. So now we're down to about 30 frames per second. And let's release the parking brake. Let's hope my throttles are working. It is not. Let's get into the controls for a second. I was clearing my controls out in preparation of another SPAD video that was requested. So we have to use the in-game stuff. And it looks like I need to disable the FPS window in order to see what I need to see. So joystick. Sure. I guess custom set is what I'm looking for. Whoa, come on. And let's move on over to the throttle. There it is. And there should be one here for TBM. Yep, and that'll work for now. I don't really like using the in-game controls, but it'll work. All right, folks. So. Clear that master caution. Let's get our FPS back up on the screen. I'm not worried so much about flying today, guys. Um, so I'm sure about a million and a half procedures will be skipped by me today. Uh, don't focus on that. We're looking at performance strictly. Okay, why are you so heavy to lift up? That is because my joystick is not responding. Come on, Microsoft. Killing me, Smalls. Killing me. Okay, it's clearly identifying it. Flight control services, control... 
All it has is the trim? Okay, that's not good. Let's just go with default for right now. It'll work. Okay, that's better. I was wondering why it wasn't responding. That was making me a little nervous. Gear up. Oh, okay, so that's not working anymore. What is going on here? There we go. Been a while since I've used the in-game controls. I didn't remember what I had them set to. Okay. So again, pretty stable all the way through. 35, between 30 and 35. And remember, you also need to subtract about two or three frames per second because I am recording using Streamlabs OBS. So um, where NVIDIA Shadow Play gives me almost a one-to-one, -one, um, I started using Streamlabs because of the audio configuration. It makes it a lot easier to manage the audio. Um, but uh, let's see here. Yeah, heading towards the city. Got all that terrain out there. I'm pointing at the screen like you guys, because you would not believe how often I do that. Um, I'm like pointing at my mono, like, why can't you guys see this? Um, anyways, plenty of buildings out there, plenty of terrain, plenty of vegetation. Everything's nice and busy out there. Um, let me show you guys what our graphic settings currently are. And feel free to pause as you choose, but I'm just going to sort of scroll through. Basically, we're on a high configuration. I haven't, I haven't dived in deep yet into my settings and tweaked every little thing yet, but I need to. Okay, so now we're here. We got our baseline again. We're let's get back in there for a second. Low thirties, low to mid thirties is what we're looking at here for um, our FPS. So at this point, let's go ahead and come back out. And I'm going to back all the way out. Now we do have to restart before this can take effect. Had to drink some monster there. Let's go to our general options. And right here where it has DX11, we're going to change that to DX12 beta. All right. And we're going to hit apply and save. And yes, we need to restart Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back in and catch it back up with you guys. All right, so we are back and actually getting a few frames less than uh, what we were expecting. And when we turn here, it's even more significant. Um, so I'm definitely going to say that this probably isn't going to be a good implementation, at least for myself. It is very, very critical that you guys remember um, that you may absolutely experience a uh, different performance. So make sure you keep that in mind, please. Um, but let's see here. I don't think we missed anything. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Yep, just using a different driver. Now, it was always mentioned that you won't necessarily get better frame rates. The idea is for better performance. That's the other thing to keep in mind. Less stuttering, less frame breaking, less tearing. So myself personally, it looks like I will not be using DirectX 12. Um, now, with that being said, I'm actually kind of curious about something. I'm not on the latest NVIDIA driver. Now, I doubt that that is going to change much. I really do. Because um, unless NVIDIA put out a specific release for the use of DirectX 12 with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's not going to change anything. The, the, the API will probably still be... The, excuse me. API will probably still be the same. But, there's your test, folks. At least from my standpoint. Um, and I'm, I, I want to make it very clear. I'm not upset with them at all. They made it very clear in the release notes that DirectX 12 was new. They've been talking all along that it is merely an initial implementation. And they made it very clear also in the release notes that there's going to be varied performance. I don't have a problem when, when they come up front like that and they say, hey, it might work for you. It might not. That's totally fair. I have no problem with that whatsoever. So 
Um, with that being in mind, guys, I'm going to say give it a try. See what works for you. I am definitely going to be going back, I think, to the DirectX 11. Um, as I definitely don't want to take a frame hit. My objective is still to increase my frames. And right now, I've, I've definitely lost a few. Um, I'm definitely getting less than what I was on DX11. Um, and that's okay. That's totally okay. Um, again, uh, DirectX 12, I mean, I think this is the first game that I personally have played, or simulator, whichever you want to call it. Um, the first use I have uh, been a part of with DirectX 12. So um, it's very much so still in development. Many developers are still uh, working on implementation for it. So I mean, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Just the fact that we're using it means that there will be advancements and, and improvements as time goes on. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so let me know how DirectX 12 is treating you guys. I'd really like to hear down below if you know of any tips and tricks that maybe I'm unaware of on how to get more efficiency out of DirectX 12. That would be fantastic as well. Uh, be sure to share that with the community. Share that down below, guys. I'll be watching for that. And as always, stay tuned for the next one because there's a lot more coming for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, we'll be checking that out definitely within the next 24 hours. So there'll be quite a few videos coming out from Overkill Simulations today. So stay tuned.